It's Christmas. Home starts with you. BBC News at 10 o'clock. The government is planning to make more use of private health companies to help cut NHS treatment backlogs in England. Latest figures show over 7 million people are waiting to be seen. A special task force will meet at Downing Street today to discuss how access to services can be improved. The Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, has signaled the government won't increase its pay offer to NHS workers to avert strike action later this month. 25 people have been arrested in Germany on suspicion of plotting to overthrow the government. They are believed to be part of a group of far-right and ex-military links which plan to storm the German parliament. Officials say raids took place across the country. Our Berlin correspondent Jenny Hill has more details. This group had actually created its own shadow government, including someone who was going to be a health minister, someone who was prepared to be the foreign minister, all headed up by a guy called Henry Royce VIII, Henry VIII, um, who was a German aristocrat in his 70s. The group would meet at his hunting lodge, apparently, and he had set himself up as a future head of state once the current government had been overthrown. China has announced a nationwide easing of its strict COVID rules. People with mild or no symptoms can now isolate at home rather than in state-run centers. The need for a negative test to access places like gyms and restaurants has also been dropped. The Disneyland theme park in Shanghai will reopen tomorrow. A UN conference on biodiversity build as the last best chance to save the planet's ecosystems opens in the Canadian city of Montreal today. Delegates are gathering for the COP15 summit, which aims to agree a new deal to save the Earth's forests and oceans from irreversible human destruction. Severe cold weather is expected across much of the UK this week, with temperatures dipping as low as minus 10 Celsius. A level 3 cold weather alert for England comes in at 6 o'clock this evening and runs until Monday morning. Snow and ice warnings will also be in place for parts of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. BBC News. Now on Radio 4, it's time for Women's Hour with Emma Barnett. Good morning and welcome to the programme, where we have one departing MP for you, who was a Secretary of State for 45 days, during Liz Truss's brief time as Prime Minister, Chloe Smith, one world-leading forensic investigator, Professor Dame Sue Black, and a focus on one of this country's best-loved artists, who's finally having her moment in New York, Beryl Cook. We also have the Oscar-winning actor, Kate Winslet, and in our very joyous and very candid conversation, in which we do cover her penchant for picking her feet, burping and breaking wind, I did say it was candid, we also discuss the topic of smartphones and children in light of her latest TV project, which I'll come on to. Kate Winslet is clear, she agrees with the Children's Commissioner for England that children shouldn't be bought smartphones, and that we will look back on what we allow children to be exposed to and be horrified. Instead, buy them a brick phone with no internet access. But it isn't also that simple, which she acknowledges. If you've navigated this or are dealing with it now, or perhaps it's to come, or you don't have children, but you've also thought about this for other people's children, what is your take? To give you the political context, because it's relevant, especially this week, on Monday, the long-awaited and rather beleaguered online safety bill returned to the House of Commons after a six-month delay. This was after controversial measures which would have forced big technology firms to take down legal but harmful, that's the key phrase, material, were axed. The government argues that the changes do not undermine the protections for children, but other people felt very differently. Uh, what do you make, then, of the idea of not buying children smartphones, of looking at this in a completely different way? What strategies have you come up with? Have you got an arrangement with your child if they're at this age? What age did you do it, if you did it? Do they have to come home and give over the device? How much uh, sight or oversight do you have or try and have? This is really difficult territory and it'd be very interesting to hear your take the number is 84844 to text text to charge your standard rate on social media we're at bbc woman's app you can now send a whatsapp message or a voice note on this number 03700 100 444 that's 03700 100 444 or send an email through the woman's app website I'm looking forward to getting your messages on this, and I imagine it's been a, a source of consternation for some of you and a source of debate too, which I'm sure will reflect. But first, let's hear from Kate Winslet herself then. Our conversation about smartphones and internet access for teens and young people stems from one of her latest projects 
in which she stars alongside her real-life daughter, Mia Threepleton, in Channel 4's female-led drama anthology series, I Am. The feature-length episode tells the story of Ruth, a mother who becomes concerned for her teenage daughter's welfare after she witnesses her retreating more and more into herself. Freya has become consumed by the pressures of social media and is suffering a mental health crisis. The story was developed and co-authored by Kate Winslet with the director, Dominic Savage. Let's hear a clip then from I Am Ruth. I heard your phone going into the early hours of the morning, darling. It's not the best idea. Beginning of a school week, sweetheart. Who on earth is possibly messaging you at that time of night anyway? Come on, sit down, darling. Have some egg. I'm not sure if you should be wearing quite such a revealing skirt to school. <laughs> I'm not sure you should be wearing such a horrible wine-coloured dress with such a low neckline. Why have you got the pink dots on your eyes? Because it's part of the style that I try out on my face. Why have you got those earrings in? Why do you have that mascara on? Why do you have no contour on? Why are you standing like that? An exchange between a mother and a daughter. 